All right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming along tonight to Communities by Design Talk. Um, I, I think it's going to be a really interesting night. Lots of, um, lots of great visions here, lots of experience in the real world, designing communities, designing co-housing communities, other kinds of alternative uh, ways of living. And it's, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Uh, my name is Matthew Daly. I'm a PhD researcher at the Institute for Sustainable Futures here at UTS. Um, I'll be introducing the other people as we go along. Um, I just wanted to start by just letting you know that we are filming the night, so if anybody has an issue with that, maybe sit at the back. Or like, it doesn't want to be on camera, sit at the back and you won't be in the screen. And if you have, you know, or come and talk to me afterwards and we'll make sure in the edit you're not, you don't appear. Uh, yeah. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, upon whose ancestral lands the university uh, now stands. I'd also like to pay respect to the elders, both past and present, acknowledging them as the traditional custodians of knowledge for this place, and also one of the most successful examples of sustainable and low-impact living. Uh, this is something that I added in at the last minute. There's a hashtag for the evening. For anybody who is on Twitter and wants to tweet away, there are a few people that ask me specifically, is there a Twitter hashtag so they, they can follow even though they couldn't be here. So I hope there's a couple of people out there who are ready to, ready to tweet. So I'm just going to start by giving a really quick, uh, quick scene setting for what, uh, why we're finding this, why we I thought this is a really interesting topic we could put on for the evening. So there are a number of um, challenges that are facing our society and our cities. One of them is around housing affordability, and that, that's really how the, the housing crisis is, is framed at the moment. Um, it's dominated, dominated by talk of affordability, and one in five households in Sydney is experiencing housing stress, so it is a very real issue. But there are also a whole lot of other challenges that are facing, us, facing our society and our cities. One is the, uh, the changing demographics of households. By 2031, over 28% of households will be single-person households. So there's a real, a real uh, kind of lone, lone person in the household uh, trend emerging. There's also increasing rates of social isolation related to this lone household, um, lone household trend. And this is a really a, a disaster waiting to happen for health and well-being. There's, the studies have shown that social isolation is as potent a cause of early death as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, and, it's, and loneliness is nearly twice as deadly as obesity. We are also uh, rapidly or already exceeding the capacity of our Earth to sustain our society. Um, the latest figures showing that we're one, we need 1 1.5 Earths to maintain the, uh, our, our current lifestyle, and if everybody lived like an average Australian, that would increased to over four Earths. So to truly create livable urban communities, we need, we need models that equally value places that are inclusive, sustainable and resilient. Um, and so that's what we want to talk about tonight. New models, new thinking and new incentives are needed to promote positive social and environmental impacts and to create a sense of place, community ownership, well-being and, and low-impact living. And to illustrate this in one way, well, yeah, it's, it's something that is being talked about more often. That's why we think this is a really great time to be having this talk tonight and having all these speakers appear. To illustrate this in one way, I just wanted to put up one slide from my research, which shows the average carbon footprint from a sort of mainstream community, where the red line is, compared with a whole lot of eco-villages and co-housing communities that have been, have been researched and measured their, their impact. And it shows there's a, at least a 50% on average reduction, which is a really encouraging result. Uh, but probably, to me, what is the most appealing idea of creating a more sustainable, inclusive community is summed up by this quote, which I think came from Chuck's book, where I originally found it. I know I live in a community because on a Friday night it takes me 45 minutes and two beers to get from the car park to my front door. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to hear more about tonight. We're going to have talks from 
a number of ex excellent speakers. First up will be Gilo Holtzman, who's a passionate and knowledgeable co-housing designer, who has advised a number of uh, Australian groups trying to form sustainable communities. He'll be followed by Stina Kerens, we'll talking, who is talking about a socially, financially and environmentally sustaining a sustainable village they're working on and uh, they have people living in and called Sun Villages. Ben O'Callaghan will then talk about lessons learned from his time as a resident at Kurumba Nico Villages, how, is it, how he's applying those lessons to, with this smart urban villages uh, housing model. And finally, Chuck Durrett, one half of the partnership that is credited with coining the English term co-housing, um, will share his vast experience guiding groups through the process of... So, to get moving on the night, I'd like to invite Gilo up to start talking to you.